My name is Tun Jashkan. I'm a research assistant um, at the Technical University of Berlin um, at Helmholtz Institute. Helmholtz Institute is one of the oldest institutes in the world on HVAC. Other than building energy simulation, we also develop kind of flow visualization systems, flow measurement systems, and we also simul make simulations for thermal comfort in the residential areas, but also in the aircraft cabins and the car cabins. And we deal also with um, indoor air quality. It's also quite important in our field. Uh, and the new, one of the new subjects we, we, we also deal is the um, air quality in operation rooms so, or clean rooms. Actually, I was just working on, a, on the subject, say, for two years. And um, the fact is this new method of simulation, which uses CFD tools, is a method that you can just run annual building energy simulations in 3D, which can cal calculate the building energy consumption much more accurate than the normal commercial tools. Uh, we just make calculations with two common tools, one 1D tool and one 3D tool. Actually, this 3D tool is a CFD code, it's Star CCM Plus. And in industry or in practical usage, there are lots of 1D tools. You can just sep separate 1D tools like 1D tools in daily use, something like you just need to calculate the building energy consumption very fast, and you need to do that in the national standards or international standards, and it should just work like kind of an Excel table. And the other 1D tools is more scientific, like Daimola, and in this case you can just use lots of model libraries. They are more complicated, but you can't use them in practical life. Um, what we are trying to do is um, just get CFD or 3D calculations in use of these 1D tools according to the national or international standards, not in the scientific way, but in the um, say fast calculation of the building energy comp consumption and also optimizing this comp consumption so to reduce the, or to increase the building energy efficiency in some way. Actually, there are more aspects in this case. Uh, one of them is, of course, the two dimensions which we neglect in 1D simulation. So we just use the dominant uh, direction. If we just uh, assign the wall, uh, outer wall, as the main direction, as the orthogonal direction, the heat comes in, in the building. So we just ne neglect all the components out of this dimension. The other one is this radiation. Most of the 1D tools, they just use radiation like an energy source coming in, in the building, like an internal lot, like a personal loss and so on. And uh, in CFT, of course, you have more detailed formulation of radiation, and you can also just calculate the heat in all three directions. So the accuracy coming from CFT or the better accuracy coming from the CFT is um, coming from two, these two subjects. They are just the main point. If you can just think about the buildings and try to build, the, try to um, say to group the buildings, you can say the buildings is, have standard geometry, like the boxes. They are all, I mean, the like squares. And we have the buildings that are quite extraordinary, like uh, domes or churches, or they are, have some some different kind of a, a unique geometry. So we can just separate also our simulation tools in this in this view. We can use 1D tools. For everyday work, something like uh, the residential buildings, we have just usual geometry. We can use the 1D tools for that because in this case, we don't make too much error. The difference between 1D and 3D is not that high. But in the other case, if we have some kind of a unit geometry with lots of, um, say, different surfaces and some kind of domes, uh, big theaters, big halls, then we just need to calculate with the 3D tools because 1D tools, they are not accurate. The two neglected component, components and radiation calculation that just lead us to make lots of errors. Uh, and the other, su other side, one um, main subject, but we also, uh, but be because we use the 3D, comp 3D simulation, is the thermal comfort. And the thermal comfort of the occupants in the rooms is not a steady state. Uh, steady state problem. It's a transient problem. If you just think about the aeroplane, you are not, uh, you, you, you don't feel yourself in a whole flight in, in real thermal comfort atmosphere. 
So in this case, we talked about we can also just predict thermal comfort in, in an unsteady way. So we can run unsteady yearly um, energy simulations in 3D. And with that results, we can also predict thermal comfort in transient, which 1D tools can't uh, deliver us. I mean, if you think, think about our society, if you want to buy a car, you just uh, think about how much fuel it comes up, right? And, but we never think about how much energy our buildings just consume. That's the, that's the very important point. I mean, we, we just invest too much time or too much energy developing better engines and so on, but we don't do it for the buildings. And in this case, if, uh, what I show also in my presentation, it was something like, 10 or 12 percent of the total energy consumption in Europe and something like 15 percent of primary energy in, in, in the US is just uh, it can just flow to HVAC in a year. It's a huge amount and if we can just increase the building energy efficiency just a little bit so we can decrease this total amount of energy flowing in this direction. And one other main subject I think is to make the people really responsible for it. They just really look for a building which has a high energy efficiency, like a car, when they're buying a car, they're looking at the full consumption, right? It's hard to, hard to say in this, in this point because we don't have any measurements done, uh, but um, the simulation is also very important for the optimization. And for the optimization, you need an accurate simulation. I mean, on an unaccurate simulation, you can do any optimization, or you can do, run an optimization with, which is also false. So you want to improve the energy efficiency of the building, maybe you can just you can just uh, make it worse, right? Um, from the architectural point of view, I think um, it's hard because um, if you just think about the mechanical engineering working on the HVAC sector, they're more or less working uh, separately with the architects. I mean, you got the building, but there's no coupling back to change the building geometry in point of architecture. We just uh, can play with the materials or we can make um, uh, some small may differences in, in the building geometry. And, but we can also show the architects in 3D how they can make a building more energy efficient. I think if we can just uh, calculate the building energy, energy consumption more accurate, uh, at first, we don't need to optimize because now, uh, according to our studies uh, with 1D simulations, there are huge differences. So we just first get the um, right and accurate simulation or results. And after that, if you just try to optimize the building uh, some, in some way to increase the energy efficiency, um, we can just do it locally. We can just get some points. and without too much cost and investigation on it. We can just optimize the building in, in locally, just in some points. And that would lead us, in my experience, at least 10% of the total energy efficiency of the building, depending, of course, uh, on the climate where the building is, and the solar loads, the internal loads, the usage, usage of the building. There are lots of factors. But more or less, I would say 10% we can increase at first. That should be the aim.